Hi guys. So last time we got a question um, regarding EMF of um, EMF disruption of potential social distancing. I thought it was a very interesting question. So let's um, actually look at that. Uh, before we start though, I'd like to um, say a disclaimer. Uh, some people wondering about background, so I want to make sure that I'm fully transparent. I am self-funded. I'm doing my postdoctoral, uh, mainly focusing on brain waves and cellular waves. Uh, my understanding of EMF is really at a high level, um, physics level. I'm not a physicist, uh, but I do know enough so that I can um, communicate in that language, more specifically when it comes to um, frequencies and whatnot. Before we go into the electromagnetic fields of social distancing, let's look at the way in which we communicate as human beings at a more fundamental cognitive psychology level. My um, background is also in cognitive psychology, so there's a lot to be said about the way in which we communicate. Essentially, the five senses we have, there are at the physical level, the main points of frequency extensions. In other words, you receive frequencies and you also emanate frequencies through these five um, sensors. And that is how we communicate. In other words, we don't only communicate with words and body language, we're also communicating with a lot of things that we see, we smell, and we touch. And so holistically at that level, when you look at your environment and when you talk to other people, where they talk to you, that is where your whole system is information, uh, receiving information from. And these informations are um, translated in terms of frequencies, in terms of waves. Now, when it comes to actually um, measuring the frequencies internally. We do have, for example, EEG devices already. Uh, we can also measure the oxygen and glucose level with the fMRI machines, and there are other, lots of other devices as well. However, when it comes to measuring the EMF of human beings, we're not there yet. We do have some devices, MMG for example, but then it becomes a whole other level um, to measure that just because we are bombarded with other EMFs already. So if you want to measure that, you do need to really isolate the person in one specific uh, isolated room to be able to uh, measure those EMFs. As a result, scientifically, we're still not able to fully um, look at what our EMFs are doing. But if you look at it at the, uh, the way ancient um, spiritual leaders talk about it, for example, they, they um, cover it in, in extensive books and documentations that I'm sure you're aware of. But sticking to the middle, which, which I am, both science and spirituality, um, the way in which we can also um, look at how our EMFs are impacting uh, our environment and also how we are impacted by the EMFs of the environment, it's very clear that um, there is a communication of energy and of frequencies that is happening, some of which we can already measure. So to recap, the way we communicate and interact with our world is both through the physical actions, but also non-physical actions. And the non-physical ones are the ones we don't see, which is frequencies. And so going back to the question about the EMFs, absolutely, there is a um, interference with that, but not as much as we might think because the brain is amazing. It is um, able to kind of um, adjust to situations that are very different than um, it's used to. And that is a huge part of the learning. And that is also how we learn a lot from our environment. So all these five senses, um, touching being one of them and tasting, 
um, plays a role. So with that introduction, now let's look at the um, frequency or um, the cognitive psychology of social distancing that is called, by the way, I'm not sure why it's called social distancing, um, and also mask for that matter. I'm not taking any political stance, by the way. I'm not a medical doctor, nor am I a politician. I'm just going to look at it from the psychology and from the frequency standpoint. And because of what we just talked about, the way in which we communicate is through all these five senses, including touching and watching and looking at each other. Because of that, it does interfere when we are covering our faces and also when we stay, try to stay away from each other. How does it do that? Let's say hypothetically you are now listening to me and I am wearing a mask instead of, you know, you just uh, looking at my face. Um, in that sense, you will only see, for example, my eyes. You are not able, your brain kind of need to guess whether I'm laughing or smiling or, and so a lot of these emotional cue that you would be able to pick up otherwise. And these emotional cues, by the way, all can be explained in terms of frequency level. That's why I freaking love this science, uh, the frequency science. Um, and and you, you need to sort of um, guess. And that is where um, the brain might sometimes become a little bit confused. So is the way in which, for example, we touch each other. If, if you notice that sometimes we do communicate, like we tap each other on the shoulder, these are all cues. These are all cues that the brain is potentially missing. However, one thing I do want to emphasize is that we don't give our brain and our body, this whole system, enough of credit, in my opinion. I think that when I look at a lot of communication that is going on on social media, there's a lot of um, these conversations that are going on where we think that everybody can control us, um, not really reminding ourselves and paying attention to the fact that whether you were aware of it or not, your body and your brain has been adapting to a lot of things since you were born, including watching this material, because a lot of things are new um, to, to us, and, and now the whole world is changing. So I do wanna emphasize the fact that at the end of, at the, end of the day, um, we do have the control in terms of owning up to our frequencies, in terms of taking control of our frequencies. And you do that by asking these questions, by becoming curious, by kind of teaching yourself that, because whether you are aware of it or not, your whole system is being affected by it. And that's the beauty of the science. And so my final thought around social distancing and mask is that it does have a huge effect but it has more impact if we don't own up to it, if we don't take the responsibility in terms of either taking a stance about it, about what we believe about it, and also what we see outside of us. I guess what I'm trying to say is that while it does have a huge impact in terms of how we see the world, how we communicate with the world, and how we impact the world and how the world impacts us, while it does have a lot of impact, part of it is also up to every one of us to um, not let that really have control over our, our lives in a sense that it kind of disrupts what it is because your brain is not stupid. Your brain can figure things out. Um, it becomes a little bit confused in the beginning. Like for example, the first two months of all these things that happened, I was really afraid and confused and all that. But then after a while, when you train yourself, you take a grasp of it and you know that you're the one who's in control of your own frequencies. So to answer 
the question that was asked about the EMF of social distancing, it does have an impact at the frequency level. It does. But that is only to look at it from one side. If you look at it holistically and at eagle eye view, the other part is the role of your own frequencies, which consists of your brain frequencies and the frequencies of every single cell in your body because they all emanate frequencies. And so it's, it's a dance of electrons that is going on within the body with the awareness and consciousness of this whole system, including the brain, and that is where your power lies. So you do have the power to change and alter your perception towards what gives you the power, what gives you the inspiration and the energy to move forward with your life and taking back control of your life, whatever the stance may be. Because at the, um, at the physical level, it does interfere but you're also able to steer the wheel, if that makes sense. And so that is why I love to look at things at an eagle eye view. First, gathering a lot of information at a very detailed level, but then getting up and look at the whole thing. That is when I think we understand it much better. I could pretty much go on forever talking about these stuff, but I do want to keep things very short. Uh, more specifically because also I'm trying to get back up on my Instagram so that will only let me um, upload 15 minutes of videos. So there's a lot more of this to say and hopefully I'll be able to um, do more videos and we can go more into depth about what each frequency means and um, both at the brain level but also at the cellular level um, and also our own conscious part in it. Um, to be able to, um, you know, move, I think, more with grace um, in, this, in this era of a lot of change. Uh, so um, thanks so much again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.